Hey boys and girls, it's uh, Tish Mom again with Idea Kitchery. Uh, sorry it's been a while. We were all really busy. Scheduling has been a mess. We have uh, another guest episode for you today. We'll be interviewing Dr. Abdullah Al Mamun. He is the chairman of the Department of Japanese Studies in the University of Dhaka. He's also the research director of Center for Governance Studies, and he has a lot of other uh, <laughs> accolades and uh, things to talk about. So I won't go through all of them and bore you guys. But he is um, he's a very fun guy to talk to. He's very um, su super highly educated. I don't even know how many degrees this man has. Uh, but yeah, he was, it was a very fun conversations, uh, conversation. I hope you guys like it too. Uh, one other thing, Fardim couldn't make the video today. I mean, not today, the one that you're going to see. Uh, he it, The schedule just didn't work out. But anyways, I uh, hope you guys have fun. Watch the episode, give us a like, whatever. Uh, <laughs> see you guys. And it's my honor and pleasure to join you today young chaps from two different geographic locations and uh, so all together we represent four countries because i have a bit of exp academic experience in uk and then you two are currently from australia and canada and now i'm sitting in bangladesh so it's a fantastic combination of four different geographical locations and as i was saying uh, i have seen your programs uh, it's really lovely to witness and at the same time, please accept my indebtedness for inviting me in uh, Idea Kichuri. Uh, <laughs> as, as, as we were thinking to discuss, I think in uh, my time in the UK, when I was there for my higher studies, uh, many occasions I faced that told me, uh, what am I doing, whether it is correct or what, uh, what I was doing, whether it was wrong. Thereby, uh, I share my idea to talk to you about the uh, adjustment in the new environment, regardless of uh, Australia, UK, USA, or in any other country. Students from Bangladesh and other geographic locations are flying to the popular destination famous for academic uh, uh, pursuit, such as USA, UK, Australia, New Zealand, and other countries. We, uh, the international students, when we fly to those countries, the first thing we experience and encounter is the culture, different culture, which one is correct, which one is not, what to do, what not to do. And most importantly, everything is exciting. A big shopping mall, but limited money in the pocket. A big departmental store, Tesco or Sainsbury or Walmart, but again, the size of the pocket is very thin. Uh, really, what, which one to buy, which one is not. So for an example, when I was a student in Bangladesh at Dhaka University in 1990s, I used to use a paste called Pepsodent. But when I went to UK, saw the uh, Sensodyne, the price, I think I can clearly recall it was uh, seven, eight, or 10 pounds. So I bought a toothpaste when I was a student, mostly close up. It's a, uh, one mini pack of close up with three taka or five taka pounds. Mm -hmm. But I, when I went there and saw the price of the paste is uh, almost 800, 1000 taka, two questions was in front of me. One, where in front of me, in fact. One, should I test it? But when I consider the money I have, in my pocket, I was a great dilemma. Should I take care of my teeth first or my living, my education, my stay in USA? So this kind of experience, I think you also encounter in uh, Australia, Adib or Ishmam, you are in, in Canada. So there are a couple of things I like to highlight today in terms of this selection of choice, in terms of this uh, safe stay, abroad. Another thing I think is important to highlight is when you gradually adjust yourself with the foreign cultures, regardless, again, if an American student comes to Bangladesh or an Australian student goes to USA or a US student 
uh, goes to Australia, the same kind of experience he will face a new culture. And uh, the challenge is perhaps more enormous for the student, Muslim students, for the family students, for the kids who uh, go abroad for their uh, A-levels or maybe a first year student going abroad. They face uh, the most of the challenges and especially those igniting things for, a, for example, eating beer, going to the dance club, uh, having card for pub, uh, joining a foreign student, joining Christian student, joining other religious student for other activities. And end of the day, sometime, I'm not telling the, all the students, but sometimes they end up uh, with uh, the, 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 with the, end up with failure in fact. And uh, if you investigate, you'll see most of the cases, the reason was lack of awareness and inability to adapt with the culture, uh, keeping norms and values in mind, keeping uh, country culture in mind. So I think those are the areas should be unmasked and talked uh, for the benefit of the Jaga Kichuri, Idea Kichuri, I said the Jaga Kichuri, Idea <laughs> Kichuri. That, is, Kichuri, that, is, that is our inspiration. Jaga Kichuri right. was so the Idea Kichuri audience because, uh, and I think, I think uh, we can bring different perspective and mostly hopefully uh, three of us will discuss and try to unveil uh, that how can we adjust, what is your experience there? What was my experience? But before we uh, move on to the uh, discussion, I think I like to set a theoretical tone for the discussion. The first thing uh, I like to highlight is a very uh, basic common sociological concept uh, called socialization. So uh, I think people uh, in general understand uh, or, or there, there is a hadith uh, in, in Islam called Donna Theke Kobor Ponto Puro Shomatati Amra Shiki. So we learn from the very first day of our birth till the uh, very end when we welcome the welcome the dead. Of course, no one likes to welcome the dead, but that is the reality. So this is the, in the whole span of our uh, life, we learn every moment, in fact, every second, every minute, every hour. So this process is called socialization. And if I uh, very much theoretically define socialization is the process through which individuals learn their culture and become fully human. I like to under underline uh, the sentence in, in two words. In this sentence, I like to underline two words uh, that is a continuous process and via which an individual become fully human because uh, if you are a Muslim, you have to you have to pray. If if you are a female, your dress will be different than a male. Uh, if you are a imam of a mosque, your behavior should be different than a normal Muslim. Uh, if you are a, a Christian priest, your behavior should be different than a, a Catholic. So these are the ways every individual socialize himself or herself. Uh, uh, taking himself in a different, taking himself or herself in a different context, as a religious leader, as a political leader, as a student, and then start learning the basic components, the process, the ideas, and uh, try to become the right fit, the right person. For an example, if I ask Ishma, uh, how can I define that you are a student? What is your process of socialization in this regard? Um, so. I think from your conversation, one of the things, like from the things that you were mentioning, one of the things that interests me a lot is um, identities and the roles we undertake. Um, you were talking about um, being Muslim, being Bangladeshi, being Catholic and so on and so forth. There's a lot of um, identities that we sort of um, connect with. And then there's also, I guess, roles. And I know, I don't know sociology, so I might be messing up the terms. Um, these are just things that I defined in my head. Uh, so as a student, I think, and I was having this conversation with my father very recently, actually, um, about how a lot of people think you sort of come abroad to just uh, get a PR. I think that is a very, very um, common understanding that you are coming abroad to just become a citizen of another country. But I think at least for me, it was always sort of 
um, finding out what the opportunities were and like getting the, making the most of the opportunities I had. And that would mean for the person I wanted to become from when I was in Bangladesh, I needed to come here um, to sort of expand my horizons, if that makes sense. Mainly in the sense that I, at that point, I wanted to do something in physics. I had this big aspiration of becoming a Nobel Prize winning physicist. Um, and I saw the way of doing it would be uh, through coming to UBC. An interesting thing, an interesting story that actually stems from that is uh, I, I remember uh, when I was coming here and my parents wanted, to me, wanted me to study computer science. Um, I enjoyed computer science, but I also enjoyed physics. And I was in a very big dilemma and I wasn't able to choose. One of the reasons I was able to choose UBC was the fact that when we come in for our first year, we don't, um, we are allowed to sort of explore and then decide what our major is. Um, at the end of the day, it didn't play too well for me. It wasn't too bad, but <laughs> basically I ended up, I, I am sort of doing computer science, but I also did a lot of physics and I technically have a major in neither at this point. So it's, <laughs> It's, it's funny where you end up, but um, for me, the whole thing for coming to Canada, the reason for coming to Canada was to sort of explore these options of um, how I can broaden my horizon of knowledge. And I don't know if that answers your question exactly, but that's sort of the things that came up. Uh, part, no, partly, but uh, I'm sorry to hear your frustration in terms of selection of subject, your area of interest is physics but your father said that it should be oh, um, science. But, it's, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a longer story actually, but I, I didn't want to get into all of it. I sort of, um, now I guess, I, I was sort of mentioning how the person I used to be before, uh, I wanted to study um, physics, but I think now as I sort of um, had more time and everything, I sort of realized that I feel like I could do better if I just, do better in general, not in just of financials or anything, just in terms of fulfillment in life, if I just studied computer science. So that is like my area of interest, if that makes sense. Now. Right, right. This, this, give, this gives a great clue to me that uh, you have defined yourself uh, towards the success. You're, you're motivated towards the success. But don't you think uh, there are certain factors? I like to go to Adib now. So Adib, I'm sure that you have also defined yourself and see yourself as a successful individual down the road in next three years. And I'm sure there'll be number of linchpin to uh, become successful in Australia. And I don't know about your vision to have a PR and settle there, or you like to come back to Bangladesh and endeavor yourself for the well-being of the country and well-being of your family. I'm not saying that you can't really work uh, for your country abroad, but I don't know about your final decision. But what Ismam was saying that your objective is defined. You like to do well in, in there. But what I said a moment ago, there is a process called socialization. When you uh, go to a new environment, when you, when you try to adapt there, this is the concept sociologically you can bring uh, up front or bring in front or you can talk about or should be discussed, that how do you adjust yourself? What I said a moment ago, that uh, socialization uh, is the process through which individual learn their culture and become fully human beings. So when you are in Bangladesh, your parents, your school, your peers, Bangladeshi law, your religion influenced you or told you what to do, what not. But when you are now socializing yourself uh, in Australia, so tell me, how are you doing? And what are the predicaments for you? What are the igniting factors? What are the attractions you believe that hampering your socialization process and changing your entity? A Bangladeshi boy uh, to an Australian student. Um, yeah, I think, I think you're just cutting off a bit there. But uh, yeah, thank you for the great question. So in terms of my ideas for coming to Australia and why I left the country, why I left my home country was because I similarly, I just wanted to explore something new, not particularly in the aspect of knowledge. I wasn't as mature at that time to think about knowledge and 
think about my lifelong learning, but I just wanted to explore something beyond what I'd known all my life. Um, and after coming to Australia, I went through a lot of changes, particularly in my daily habits. Back home in Bangladesh, I would wake up in the morning, I would have family with me every day. Uh, every Friday, we would have Kituri and Begun Borta together. I would go to uh, Jumma prayer with my family, with my father. And there were a lot of habits that underpin my daily routine. And these habits sort of anchored my identity. And that's how I defined myself, right? I was, and this is what, so when I came to Australia, that entire foundation of identity that I had built, it, it shattered completely. Um, maybe not in the first year, because in the first year, everything was new. I was, I was exposed to a lot of novelty. I used to go to shopping malls. I have like 10 different brands of peanut butter. I have 10 different brands of cereal and I'm just living my life, enjoying meeting new people, my studies, my university and all these things. But in the second year, after I had settled in a bit more to Australia, I started to realize that there were a lot of gaping holes um, that had been left after I came because I'd lost the habits that I'd built all my life. Uh, I wasn't seeing the people that I was so used to seeing. And then that's when, you, that's when I had my most sort of impactful, I guess, year would be, is I had to figure out who I was and what were the- May, 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 I, may I particular, those. may I, sorry for the interference. Yeah. May I particularly no. ask you about your experience? You said you touched a bit, in fact, that uh, you adjusted yourself and it took almost a year to adjust yourself. Uh, yeah. Throwing away the attraction of Australia, opera to the, to the Sydney Stadium or Melbourne Cricket right. to the uh, Australian tribes. Or, or very uh, alluring factors such as pubs, bar, and everything. And you said that you adjusted well with those, but at the same time, you said there were attractions for you. So may I know how did you do that? Right. How have you adjusted uh, yourself? Yeah. Um, to be honest, I, I, I don't go about avoiding all the attractions. I try to maintain a moderate, a moderate relationship where I see fit. Um, so I haven't gone completely in isolation from novelty. I still enjoy doing new things. I still enjoy trying new things. Um, but it's, it's always with an understanding of things have to be in moderation. And I need to understand when things are too much. That's how I choose. That's how I've chosen to adjust to, to this new life. Um, right. I, 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 I think one, one, one issue I think I can uh, flag up here is the yeah. values or uh, your thinking or your respect mm -hmm. to your family, uh, mm -hmm. to your parents, their money, uh, their expectation. Right. And most importantly, what you say that you like to succeed there, or I, I, I should redefine, you, you like to see yourself successful, regardless you are living in Australia or you come back here in Bangladesh. Yeah. But I think, I think it is important to give you a clue that there is a term called value. Uh, I'm sure that you both are familiar with this term, and in many occasions you have heard it from your parents, from yeah. your uh, from your friends, from your grandpa, grandma, sister, and, and most of the time in the talk shows, cultural talk shows or discussion in the newspaper that what we call value. So let me bring this concept here, and uh, I think you two will agree with me that value uh, it calls it's a sociological concept that helps you define what is wrong and what is right. So if I can, uh, if I can place it differently, uh, I can say that values is collective concept of what is considered good, uh, desirable or proper, and what is bad, undesirable or improper in a culture. For an example, eating uh, or drinking rather, drinking beer in Bangladesh is forbidden. Ishmael, how about in Canada, if someone drinks alcohol or beer, would he be punished? Uh, definitely not. Um, I think I have a more interesting answer because I have had some time to think about the things that you were mentioning. Um, for me, I guess this would be an interesting take, but uh, I basically did not have a great school life if I'm being honest. Um, and so uh, when I came to university, I wanted to change that. Um, and because I had such a tainted experience, um, it didn't have much to do with like how my life at how home was, like my parents were great with me. Um, I just always 
had this sort of distaste towards um what's the right word i had a distaste towards i not exactly bangladeshi culture but let's just say the culture not completely but kind of i had a distaste towards the culture the rules and everything so when i came uh, to canada i was trying to sort of figure out what the person that i would be without sort of all these um rules and um habits and uh, adib mentioned that um without all of these ties back home wh- wh- who who is the person that i become i really wanted to know the answer to that and so in my first year i did a lot of thinking and contemplation but also as adib mentioned um there is a lot of novelty here and a lot of freedom that comes with it uh one of the interesting things was that and i was surprised my parents were okay with it was um i used to just go hang out with friends late at night like whenever i wanted to um they would call me at 4 am and because they saw me active on messenger and they're like what are you doing and i'm like oh, i'm just hanging out with friends at the beach or something like that and they would be like okay that's okay no worries uh whatever um they were very cool with it uh anyways so like there were all of these things that i was able to do that i wasn't able to do in bangladesh partially because over here it was safer like i could go out on walks more um i could go out alone all my life i've been i fo- sort of felt very sheltered and so this was very um it like it felt like i was very free and i was embracing the freedom and also like all the novelty of being able to do and pick up whatever habits i wanted i played football when i wanted to i went to study when i wanted to and i felt really happy and i didn't know I, we never had this conversation me and adib um but i had a very similar experience where in second year um sort of this whole uh like the novelty of it all sort of wore off and i started noticing all the things that sort of felt empty and it's very hard to pinpoint because i just remember the general feeling of second year and not the exact details of second year uh but also another thing uh that was interesting in first year was that i uh be, like i i studied in scholastica and it was an english medium school and there was sort of it was the norm to not like bangladeshi culture like we were more attuned to western culture than to bangladeshi culture and so one of the things that didn't happen when i came here was like culture shock that was not a thing that happened for me um and but the weird thing was once i was taken out from the environment from of scholastica where everyone had this mentality of disliking the country and i think our country has a weird obsession with self hatred everyone hates themselves in a very weird way and it that, that sort of ingrained in you but when i came abroad i started appreciating a lot of the things that i guess i did appreciate was was scared to talk about and also like different things like b- the bangladeshi music movies stuff like that like i started feeling a connection towards these things bangladeshi food like i never enjoyed bangladeshi food when i was in um dhaka i would like want pizzas burgers all of these things but over here i overindulged in such like so many fast foods and everything that at one point i was craving like food from home and i was listening to music from home like my parents used to ask me what type of li- music do you listen to and why do you always listen to english music when i was back home but when i came here i automatically sort of started appreciating the culture more and i think the separation in one way um allowed me to sort of see the culture for like see the good in the culture and staying in canada you also sort of um see this see a side of things that people sort of don't see um western cultures are sort of um held in in a pedestal from people who live like people who don't live here and i think that's also true for western countries looking at eastern countries or like less developed countries they find something that that there and they appreciate it and it's an interesting thing but let's not go into that no th- thank you shubham it's you see very interesting to have two different perspectives uh, uh adib one was pretty similar with my experience that going to uk uh, for my study looking at the uk society because i'm a bangla medium student you are pride uh, 
you should be proud and of course you're privileged that start in very good schools but i am from a uh, bangla medium school remote from here from rongpur mm -hmm. and uh, can you imagine the, how many miles i have traveled from that uh, school to uk so it was pretty uh, like adib however i went there with in a mature age and by that time uh, i studied i know and uh, for many years i traveled to uh, european countries american countries so that was not that igniting for me but i've seen uh, students of adibes who really struggle i'm sorry to use the word to 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 remain in the right path right track but uh, i like to underline or highlight rather what adib has said moment ago that last year excitement experiment emotion a movement that uh, that hugely reduced in second year he is no more focused and he believes he adjusted with the trend from theater market uh, stadiums and everything australia i think uh, pretty similar you have done in canada but i think my story is uh, has the great similarity with adib Uh, that uh, initially excitement but where i see in your case is mom is resocialization what you are saying and unfortunate that you pointed a finger to your school system uh, to your uh, to your friends that english medium i don't know with sanity or insanity or with goodwill or bad uh, promotes uh, western culture and uh, i'm sorry it was not a topic to discuss uh, now but i like to touch upon Uh, two things one uh, i think it is important to to learn the best of to take the best of the english medium that is education system knowledge pedagogy curriculum it is not staying here in bangladesh and listening english music preparing oneself to settle in usa in canada or australia rather this is where we make mistake and i i we are this Uh, uh, your channel of idea kichuri i like to request and draw attention of the english medium school authorities and also the parents please uh, respect our culture promote our culture i felt our culture our society bangladesh and learn the best thing from english medium don't try to change yourself a black can't change your skin so as a bangladesh you can't be american you can have a american passport but you can't change your skin Uh, like an american maybe you are bright or you are black but you can your skin will never be like american so don't try to do that rather promote your proud culture promote your good cultural element promote and try to help your children learn what they should learn living in bangladesh so that the, in a nutshell what i like to say that learn the good thing good education good system good curriculum make yourself international with the license the certificate call a and o levels or maybe from other education board that would be your academic passport to travel all around the world to go to the good places and learn but uh, it is uh, mamoon or ishmam or adib as we can't change your, our skin we should uphold uh, our culture i like i now like to relate ishmam's experience that when he was here he was in illusion Uh, moving with friends eating pizza and pasta the illusion when you what happened to you you have seen uh, going there in canada you have seen practically oh this is west uh, this is canada so that 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 illusion has departed from your idea from your thoughts from your physics and you started feeling the great attraction to food to your culture so this is totally very two very good examples one me and adib it's a different case but ishmam your own is different case so i like to request uh, uh, the parents and the students who are hearing us that uh, we should affel our culture we should learn how to keep ourselves away uh, from the attraction of the west and try to do it uh, let me conclude uh, uh, ishmam uh, and and most importantly one should not waste uh, time such as one year or on half year or two years uh, from the beginning uh, i mean what you both said that in the second year in the second year but why not in the first year what i did as a mature student in uk because i was very careful from the big, very beginning that this is not for me this is not right for my culture 
and 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 also uh, what we said a moment ago, we have to learn that what I said, what value is, we have to we have to understand uh, to say no to something which which one is not acceptable to Islam, which one is not acceptable by my parent, which was not acceptable in my culture. We have to say no to that, and this no, what I'm saying, is our values, and how that value is developed. The value is developed through religious influence through educational influence, and most importantly, through family influence. So we learn uh, to say, uh, say no to something or to say yes to something. So parents, students, uh, whoever are planning to go abroad, I think, uh, please, uh, please uh, tick a box today that you have to uh, have a strong value when you are traveling abroad uh, to say, no to something or to say yes to something. Otherwise, the experience Adib or I have or many of the students, but it is good that uh, we came back from that initial enjoyment to our uh, remain on, on track. And as uh, I think I, I, I was able to finish my study, Adib will be very much able to finish his study. But our message to the new students that don't feel very uh, uh, attraction to the exciting thing, to the new things which are not allowed from our culture, from the perspective of our culture, from the perspective by, by of novelty, our religion. By Mr. novelty, just to, just to clarify, um, I don't yeah. think either of us meant we doing anything that our culture sort of didn't tell us to, um, like, we weren't necessarily mentioning anything that was like uh, strictly like forbidden in our culture. I think me and Adi both were sort of talking about the novelty of having freedom, which we did not have when we were uh, back home. And so um, being able to like make decisions for ourselves, I don't think me or Adi were able to sort of do that. Um, and so I think the novelty comes from that. And also like the novelty of just being in a different country, um, the, uh, like the roads are nicer, the weather is like sort of more comfortable and stuff like that. So those those are the sort of novelties we were sort of particularly talking about. Uh, just just to clarify. And, no, no, no. Uh, I, 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 Ishmael, I understood that. I understood I, that. And I, I, I praised that. Yeah, Adib. Yeah. Uh, just to, just to, so, because there's a lot going on. Uh, Ishma, I have a few points of relatability with Ishmael as well in terms of the fact that I've started to appreciate my life back home. It's it's very it's relatively recent, and the only reason for that is because that's been taken away from me. Um, if, if I was still there, I, I did not have that appreciation when I was there. So I 100% understand where he's coming from on that aspect. Secondly, in terms of what's right and wrong, I found that, uh, just like you said, Mamun Uncle, in terms of picking what's right and wrong from the academic institutions, you also have an aspect where you can pick right and wrong from cultures. Uh, broadly speaking, there are some good things about our culture, there are some good things about Western culture. And we're in a, Ishmam, you and you as, and uh, Mamun Uncle, you as well, we were in very privileged positions and very unique sort of positions where we could experience multiple cultures. And this meant that we could assimilate what was good, what was bad. Of course, that depends uh, on how well you can judge what's right and wrong. But the reason I think it took time for me and Ishmael, uh, and it might take time for a lot of people is simply because at that stage you're transitioning and you're redefining who you are and you're redefining your own values uh, and you're growing as a person, which is a very, it's a, it's a, it's a slow process, but, uh, but patience is required. The reality, right? Uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's how I sort of see it. And of course, uh, I don't think I'm completely set in life now <laughs> at all. I have a lot of struggles that I still deal with just like anyone else. I'm just trying to figure it all out as I go along, right? I'm just 21 years old. Life is way ahead of me. So yeah, just to clarify, just to keep, things in perspective um and, so yeah go ahead if um you. nothing I, I just sort of uh, another thing i wanted to mention is um i think regardless of what people would tell me um most like, yeah mo i wouldn't say that people don't have influence over me because people definitely do and i have obs observed that more so now um it's just that if someone tells me this is what like this is how to be or like these are the values to be upheld I will not accept that. And I think my parents know that and because they've tried that and like that didn't work, um, sort of. And my father also like sort of encouraged questioning almost everything. 
Like he was like, questioning everything is not out of bounds. You question everything, you'll find the answer, you'll find what's right and what's wrong. So I always um, took that to heart. And that I don't think is always a very fast process. That is a very long process. You, because when you are trying to figure all these things out, sometimes you're going to find answers like that are not correct. And then you go on and then you sort of uh, figure out that it is. One of the most interesting things is discipline, I think. Um, in school, our principal, uh, we used to call him Briggy. Sorry if you're <laughs> watching. Um, he was a brigadier general and we used to call him Briggy. Uh, but he would always talk about discipline, about how you have to be disciplined in life. And I think none of us really cared about it. Yeah. It was so, um, in some ways, it wasn't his fault. And I don't, think, I don't think he could have done anything to possibly explain to us the importance of discipline. Um, it was just how it was. But when I came here, um, and he also said something that I wanted to mention. He said, you either have to be disciplined or life will discipline you, um, or <laughs> life will discipline you. Um, and I sort of realized that when I came in my first year, uh, and I was like, okay, I can do everything perfectly. So I won't do any, like anything wrong. So I had, I started stacking my routine. So my routine, like I would like, okay, um, after like the first two weeks of waking up whenever, sleep, going to bed whenever the novelty wears off, it's, it's, it takes a toll on your head and you're not never going to do that again. Um, unless you get into bad habits, let's not get in there. Uh, but basically I was like, okay, I'm going to wake up at this time and then I'm going to go to bed in this time. And then in the middle, I have to do a bunch of different things so that I can ensure that I'm happy tomorrow and so on and so forth. Like I started from that idea and then I sort of built discipline off of it. And I also was starting to become organized back home. And then over here, it sort of manifested itself greatly where I was like, everything has to be in its right place. Like exactly. Like it's a term I think chefs use called maison plus. It's a French term uh, where you have to put everything in its place. And right I took place. that to heart. And basically I try to keep everything in its right place. And that's not something that someone could have told me to do in the past. If they did, I would not do it because I remember my father would tell me, um, oh, um, oh, if you have, uh, I would just throw my pants or like throw my shirt in one of one corner of my room. And my father would scold me about that, but I wouldn't really care. I would just be like, it's, it just takes so much time. But when I came here and also a bit at the end of um, school life, I was starting to get more organized and trying to starting to notice the benefits of it. And at that mm. point, I sort of figured out that, okay, discipline is something very important in life. And then in my third year, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to be off. Yeah, yeah, that's okay, that's okay. Uh, can I stop? So what, what, what was going on in your mind when you are saying that I try to bring myself in the right discipline or you may not accept the discipline plan, tried to plant it by your principal uh, in the school when you were there, but what played inside you? What are the factors or what are the elixirs that really contribute to your thought process to become disciplined? Uh, so I think mainly the thing was that uh, by discipline, what I am trying to sort of talk about more so is structure. Um, I did not like any sort of structure imposed on me. So I wouldn't like it if someone told me, wake up at 7 a.m. every day or um, do this every day or uh, like, I can't think of specific examples because I, my brain sort of, I, for some reason stays in the abstract too much, sorry about that. No, to be but, honest, it's, oh, sorry, it's just work. go ahead. Uh, so basically it, it was just that for me, the idea that sort of sold it was that I have to ensure that whatever I do keeps me happy tomorrow um, and, uh, so on and so forth, like forever. Uh, and that and in the long exactly. run, so it is, that will keep you happy tomorrow. And then what about the mm -hmm. day after tomorrow or a month? Yeah, yeah. So what so are, the, so what are the factor to, to remain disciplined for after 10 months, after one year? It was just the fact that um, I think, and I mean, if someone really wants to, you can go ahead and try. Like if you're not disciplined at all, 
you're just going to feel really bad in in a very short amount of time so Fine, in one month then after what about after three years is if someone doesn't remain disciplined so what can happen with him after three years it's i i have seen a lot of people drop out of university not because they had a particular plan in mind but just because it was forced on them because they weren't being responsible enough to sort of understand uh, how to uh, be per se but there were some one, people who were financially to stop you have Yes. Uh, you don't like to you don't like interference of other people including your parents you said but for the sake of this discussion as i'm the guest uh, can uh-huh. i stop you here and yeah, yeah, my sure. question same i i like to put same question to adib that uh, please let me clarify that i'm not saying that everything is bad in west no mm-hmm. remember oh, yeah. you can okay. uh, born and brought up in australia but australian will say that robber is bad australian will say over drinking alcoholism is bad australia will say killing someone is bad we are not taking our discussion to that regard mm-hmm. so uh, you really pointed out very the three very important words in phrase rather two or three words uh, you need to be responsible you have seen people irresponsible they drop out and you said they do not have the planning line so i like to put the same question to adib that yeah. what were the factors that played behind you to keep yourself in the good shape right direction in australia because i know what happens when i go down the bad line i lose track now for an example any it. experience any example yeah yeah if i if i'm very specific if i go back to the first i think first half of my second year I had zero like the first half of my second year was when coronavirus hit so it was that was again like an insane external shock in everyone's lives all over the world country went through lockdown uni closed down i was not going to face to face lectures everything was online basically everyone's lives changed as we understand it right um and the path i i didn't adapt to that very well in the first 6 months because my habits broke down i was staying at home i was being lazy i wasn't doing my lectures waking up sleeping at weird times and everything went into disarray so that's the exact example of having not zero i don't want that's too mean to myself let's say very very less discipline um so having been through that you come process. out of that yeah exactly having been through that process so how did you how did you come out that is that is what i like oh, to yeah well yeah you. um well <laughs> what are the motivation factors yeah. yeah as ishman very correctly pointed out you start feeling right. like crap right you start feeling like crap and when i would speak to my family again this comes back to what you were talking about family influence in maintaining the norms and values when i would speak to my family they would they would understand where i'm coming from but they were also supportive in saying hey you might want to try this this might work for you better and i'm very grateful for my family in this regard uh in that they're never judgmental of me and they they sort of help me get out through my messes which i have with like everyone else all the time so you have um, you have yeah. family support right and then and second support i have friend support and of course there has to be an aspect of self reflection where you can where you can look at yourself and be like hey can i do better maybe there's some things i can do better because all this is doing is okay great i get to sleep till 10 pm or 12 pm today and i feel like I I get to stay up all night and I have a fun time watching all my shows. I still do that. I'm not saying I don't. But do that doing that on a daily basis. I I could see for myself how that was not good for me. Um yeah, this, this is this why I like to stop. No, this is why I like to stop that. Yeah. Uh I like uh this is not good. I like to see myself to something different. I like to be on You know your potential and you want to reach that. Yeah. You see if you see you uh, if I first go to Ishmam discipline an yeah. example of what one discipline story in london underground see it's a different society everyone like to become disciplined and uh, ishmam uh, was saying i really appreciate that that there are some bads in us as well as uh, in bangladesh we can't really say that everything is perfect here uh, west become successful so you can't really criticize relentlessly and say that you are better than that so we are not going to that discussion but let me tell you one example of discipline i was uh, i forget the name of the station i think it was halban uh, it was in the center, 
to the center of the London Holborn Station. A big Caribbean guy, perhaps, a big. When I'm saying big, he should be uh, seven feet five or even maybe eight feet, perhaps not eight feet, but seven feet, obviously, because I'm around six feet. So I was looking at him like this. He should be seven, five plus. And uh, I, I, I didn't follow him, but I saw that he didn't board the ticket. And then uh, there is a bar uh, before the entrance. You can understand it's very, definitely it is in Australian Canada as well, where you have to swap your card or you have mm -hmm. to show your ticket to the ticket checker. Mostly swap, we swap card or just put in uh, our ticket inside there. But what he did, he came, I, I, I saw him, he didn't buy the ticket. We two are working closely from the entrance and I, I bought the ticket. He, when I was buying the ticket, he's just looking around, standing just uh, before the gate, entrance gate or the bar, which you have to clear up putting your ticket inside. And then when I came, he was just in front of me. And what he did, he just, just crossed it, just jump over the bar and just, he was just walking. And then there is a policeman. So I looked at him, he just said, so he was very helpless, perhaps for two reasons. One, he never seen, or he sometimes sees this kind of incident. And secondly, he was not there to chase that man, but policeman was of five feet something, and that man is of seven feet something. So he became afraid. So this, this happens in West, and I don't know whether this is the example of uh, discipline life or discipline people and perhaps these kind of people uh, they may be successful uh, he, if he's alcoholic on that time but otherwise he should not remain successful and this kind of incidents happen in Dhaka as well uh, sitting in a bus I have seen when I, I used to travel Uttara to Dhaka University campus in bus number three that uh, people say that I'm a student see my card so uh, please give me 10, there, there are a discount on that time, but straight away I'm a student of Dash University. I don't like to tell the name of the university and I don't like to pay or I don't have money. Sitting on a bus, you're saying I don't have the money. So this is what uh, common in every culture. Uh, so if I then go back to my discussion of socialization and values, what happened to both of you is uh, your, there are a number of agents in socialization process that influences you. For an example, your family is number one agent uh, that teaches you uh, how to hold the spoon to eat food correctly, how to eat, even uh, wash your hand after the uh, meal as, as a Bangladeshi citizen, we eat uh, using our hand or say salam to your senior, say hello to someone. So it is the family, very influential. Secondly, uh, so you say that uh, Adib, your family helped you a lot. They understood and tried, tried to help you. So you can't exclude family because family is the most uh, powerful, most strong institution in the world. Secondly, you mentioned friend. Friend is another agent of socialization. So a friend can socialize you well. A friend can help you to achieve something or a friend being a bad element can destroy you. So friend is another strong agent of socialization. In your whole process of socialization, what we define as a lifelong process of learning, family is very important, then friend, and then you say, or peer groups, or even laws and regulation, like Ismam's principle, he always embark upon discipline. Ismam didn't hear that. He is disciplined himself, proud of you, my boy. But, and there are other factors uh, in socialization process is the media, technology. So media, for an example, Facebook, you see something, a good dress, Shah Rukh Khan wears something and you try to, uh, you try to replicate that. So I'm sorry to give, I'm a cat from the, uh, your perspective, I'm giving example of Shah Rukh Khan. I should, uh, uh, citing example, Tom Hanks or uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, I don't, I have limited knowledge about, about English film. You two can name some heroes who, for an example, I don't know whether Ismam nowadays follow any ideal in, terms of his haircut, but I can see his hairstyle is different than uh, when he was in Dhaka. And you, I can see, Adib, you're with Spike. I think you don't follow any Bangladeshi uh, film star, perhaps any Australian? To be very honest, I don't follow anyone's haircut. This is me. This so is from where it came? From where this it haircut is, came? It has been this, like this for like four years. This is the easiest haircut. So from I've where been. it came? When did you ask yeah. your barber to do this? Uh, I tell my barber, make it short on the sides and medium on top. Very simple. Guy. Right. And that's all. And he did it. it. 
That's right. It, yeah. uh, Ishmael, what about your high hairstyle? I honestly, um, currently, the current hairstyle I have is not really influenced by anything I know consciously. Might be a lot of sub subconscious influences. Um, right. This is why I like to I like to stop. It gives my answer. So not all the time, the best thing should come from family, peers. This is called innovation. Our own mindset, personality. What uh, what 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 you said, self. Even my hairstyle, I didn't copy. I have a very common type of hairstyle. Just go back. So I was, I was just, uh, I was, I was a class ten student. Uh, I used to uh, have hair like we call in Bangladesh shithi hair, and then it's a nice hairstyle. And we used to use oil sometimes uh, because parents say that, especially my mother said, use oil at least twice in a week to keep your uh, hair well, well shaped and for long lasting as well. Uh, but all on a sudden, I felt that it's, it's very difficult to dress the hair in every one hour to keep it in right. Then I started just moving my fingers through the hair and it becomes like that. So it is not always the case that uh, the agent will influence you, the state will influence you, the law will influence you, your family will influence you. The reason is we are in innovation every time. For an example, if you tell me about my socialization, I didn't see any influence of Facebook. Twitter, anything else, and I still do not use Facebook. But what influenced me, perhaps my education institution, my friends, my family. So they, they are the agents who help us. So uh, if I repeat again, the family, uh, friends, uh, good peers, law, media, technology, state, these are the agents of socialization. Those help shape our behavior in the di right direction. A uh, second point, I again like to go to Ishmael. It was a very good example how he maintained his discipline. That should be, uh, I'm not saying uh, uh, my uh, Ishmael is the, should be the ideal or Adip should be the ideal for the audience. I'm not telling that they should be your ideal, but you can see how these two wonderful boys are adjusting themselves in Canada. I can't say myself that I am a wonderful man, but I also adjusted well in UK. Let me uh, give another example. I was it was perhaps my second day uh, in Tesco, one of the uh, big retail shop in Tesco departmental store, popularly in Bangladesh. Uh, we know departmental store. And there's a big departmental store in Huddersfield. Uh, I was uh, with cash mostly because my bank account didn't yet create then. I went to Tesco. Uh, I, was, I was thinking to... Uh, it was going on my mind that, uh, like what happened with, uh, uh, perhaps with Ismam, you said that you didn't like Bangladeshi food, but you can understand because of my age and reality, I was very homesick of Bangladeshi food. So I was thinking that should have dal, one vegetable, uh, one uh, spinach, uh, or fish and meat and rice. So ideal meal. So I went to Tesco with that, and uh, I, I I forgot how much I was in my pocket. But uh, then I, and in the morning, there should be egg, bread, and vegetable. So truly a, a professional Bangladeshi life for a person of, uh, for an example, of the age of uh, 35, 36, 38. So I went to Tesco. Then I started buying things uh, like one, one, uh, uh, they call tortilla in UK, tortilla bread, vegetables, spinach, oil. So I was shopping for my grocery. I was making my grocery shopping and tissues, this thing, that thing. So I was picking up things from the shelves. So when I faced the manager in the till and he was checking everything, I was still look around. I was looking around what to pick. Uh, you, you see that always very attractive things are placed in near the till so that you can buy maybe a nail cutter, maybe a paste maybe chocolate, maybe a bar, they place it so that you can buy that as part of a final shopping. So still I picked up, I can clearly recall a peanut bar. And then I was just chopping one. And then I asked how much? And he said, 230 pounds. Uh, 230 pounds I shopped. Oh, and okay. you can understand what was my situation. Uh, fortunately, I had cash in my pocket, but I can clearly recall in my whole three years life, I never shopped more than 30 pounds in Tesco because Tesco was the, was the most closest one. So again, so not only in terms of the norms and values, everyday maintaining, uh, understanding everyday life is also important. 
So from when it should come? Because I was not socialized in uh, UK system. So I become socialized that there should be everything in the sale, but you have to pay for it. Don't buy extra things. And believe me, the shopping I made on that day, one of the things I shopped, 50% was wasted. Believe me, 50% was wasted because I didn't look at the look at the expiry date. I didn't look at the type of bread. I didn't look at the items properly. The coffee I normally took, I went for gold. I normally uh, used to drink classic coffee. I went for gold. So I all those attractions really drew me to a position that I ended up with 50% wasted. So what I'm saying that uh, understanding of culture is very important. And there is also a socialization process that you have to socialize. Don't start, don't go to the shopping mall, buy many things. Don't start it going to visit the pub every day. Don't go to cinema every week. Don't uh, try to hunt. This is a bad habit of Bangladeshi people. In fact, really try to hang up with British people, UK people, or Canadian people, and they think it's my pride that I have the British people. Don't do that. Do it gradually. Prove yourself academically. Prove yourself to your classmate uh, with your extracurricular activities. True, prove yourself with your leadership qualities. Those British girls, regardless, those uh, British <laughs> boys, those UK girls, Australian girls will be after you. There are examples in my life. I, I, uh, uh, I, I, there is my, uh, but Ishmam is laughing. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, a, a girl of my color, so you can understand. Uh, I was already married, so there was no attraction from me. Uh, but she kind of very dominating from the from the beginning in in first one month or twenty days class. She was the one flying with this, saying that, saying this. But when the time of the first assignment came, she was one of my group members, and she thought, uh, "I'm a British." I brought and brought up here, and she 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 said she's Manconian. I mean, she's from Manchester. So she would be the one to 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 dominate the whole group. Then what I said, she was she was really saying, do this, do that. And then I said, uh, can I have the responsibility to make the whole presentation ready for tomorrow's uh, class? And she was the. And then I said, uh, next day I said, you see, this is the presentation I demonstrate in front of my uh, group. It was a seven-member group. Constituted with African student, English student, Russian student. Then I said, as I prepared this, may I have the privilege to present it? So see how have I, how have I done that? Then I said, can I present it on behalf of the group? And I presented, and rest is the story because we got a plus, and the whole group uh, got a plus because of my presentation. So I mesmerized that. I'm sorry to take credit of that, but I'm setting an example that it is not your color, it is not your race. It is not your entity, it is not your name, it is not your country. Rather, end of the day, what matters is your knowledge, is your learning, is your power, is your vocabulary, is your, it is your presentation skill. That will make distinct you, different you from other students. Believe you me, the teacher, the student will be after you for their help. And you can, I'm not saying at, at my age, becoming hero in the class is fruitless for a Jewish mom and Adi becoming hero, or a student going from Bangladesh in the first year becoming hero is, is very important because many things, maybe holding hand of a UK girl, having appreciation uh, from the teachers, or having free meal from the friends. Uh, it, is, it, it doesn't normally exist in those cultures, free meals rarely they offer. So you, you, can, you can really become a hero by what? By doing uh, things what you are supposed to do going abroad. What Ishmam said you are doing now, you, you have the adjustment pain, of the initial adjustment issues, but you are doing well now. I think I did well. Adi, a moment ago, it was a fantastic confession that even he was struggling at the corona time, but his family, his friend helped him. So uh, what I like to conclude uh, in this segment is that we need to be very objective driven. So, we need to be very target driven. It doesn't mean that you have to pray. I'm not going to that uh, discussion whether you should pray or not. It is up to you. I'm not going to that direction whether you should say salam or hello. It, I'm not going to that direction. So I like to conclude uh, that uh, whenever we're going abroad, our objective needs to remain in front of us in every second, every minute, all the occasion first. So this is my objective. I like what Adiv has said a moment ago that I don't, he, he doesn't believe that 
is already successful. There are miles to go. I appreciate your app, Prasadi. That so objective should be in front of you all the time in a, in a flow chart, written something. You need to write that my objective is to become IT official. No, I'm not saying that. There should be visible presence of your objective first. Second, you have to remember your values, your norms, especially your values, which one is right, which one is wrong. Because end of the day, uh, most of our perhaps spectator is from Bangladesh, but uh, you may be from Saudi Arabia, you may be from Africa, you are going to Australia, but try to initially at least, try to hold on your own values. These own values should include your culture, your family values, your norm, your religion. That should be your first weapon to combat with the alluring factors in Australia, in Canada, or in UK. Second thing, that socialization process. Don't try to jump into things that is attractive to you. Uh, apply your judgment, apply your good wishes, apply your thought process. Friends are assets, but at the same time, friends are disguised as well. So that can create problem. Uh, and uh, this is the second thing that uh, apply your judgment in doing so. So your values is coming. Third thing, your socialization process. Don't try to become a hero going abroad from very first day. Uh, what I said a moment ago, if I could, I could have been at your age, I may have ended up with a foreign girl and a red British passport. Uh, the influence I created that day and after that, a whole group, there are three women, I'm not saying they said, come and marry us, but uh, they always, I, I took the upper hand, I made the presentation in all my group assignments, all the group assignments in the past two years. And they always invited me, my grades were well, I become successful. Sorry to tell my own story, but I'm telling it for the sake of the young students who are just graduated A-levels and planning to go abroad or encountering different, different factors or challenges abroad. So third thing is socialize yourself in a way that, that takes you ultimately to your destination. I'm not saying that don't visit pub. I'm not saying don't visit bar. I'm not even saying don't alcohol, don't try beer, but ask yourself, is beer for me? Is alcohol for me? Or the objective written in front of me is very important uh, than, uh, than anything. And of course, don't really prioritize in terms of achieving the objective, in terms of becoming successful in your life. Don't really, don't please prioritize your society first or your parents first or your brother or sister first. Prioritize yourself first. Because end of the day, your parent will be dying when you are maybe at the age of 30, 35 or 40. So rest of your life, uh, you have to be successful. And I don't believe your sister or brother living here in Dhaka will be asking for financial support from you all the time. Or your friends will be asking for an iPhone or a pad or a mobile from you when you're coming to Bangladesh every year. So it is not for you. It is for you. Again, it is for you, not for your family, not for your parents, not for your country to remain successful. And to become successful, beginning is very important. So understanding our values, our norms, and what we talk about, the socialization process, living the life in discipline, uh, the students uh, living abroad now from their home country, the students who are planning to go abroad, please try to uh, make a cautious move, uh, move with caution, uh, move, with, uh, move with enormous care initially, and you will see the life is very good there because what Ishmael has said a moment ago that uh, there are clean roads, secure life, traveling facilities, food, everything is fantastic there. But you have to draw a thin line. That line, when should I cross and when shouldn't? And it's, you have it's to always a end up in a right, yeah. You have to end up in a right, having yourself in the platform of a right station, the station for Adib to become successful as an entrepreneur, or maybe the platform or station for you to become successful as an IT professional. So over to you two. Um, I would just like to, Ishmael, if you have nothing to say, I just want to summarize some of the things he touched on. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. Um, yeah, basically, like really well said, Uncle. Um, just to summarize, basically, what you were saying is, first of all, be goal-driven or objective-driven, as you put it. Um, everything you do in life or most of what you do in life should in somehow sort of intersect at a goal or drive you towards your goal, number one. Number two, the importance of family, peer groups um, in how they influence your decision-making and your behaviors. It's always important to see that sort of objectively and see whether everyone's interests are 
sort of beneficial to you and whether everyone's acting in your interest. And it's very hard to do that, uh, especially in terms of friends. Um, that's something I think everyone has to reflect on constantly. And lastly, we had the aspect of sort of um, values, uh, values and how you maintain them and how it's, it's like Ishmael said, it's a balancing act of understanding what's right for you, what isn't right for you. Uh, but it's, it's pr pretty much the most important part of, of life. Um, Ishmael, if you have anything to add. Uh, no, I didn't have a concluding thing. I sort of had like other ideas to talk about, but I think we're already yeah. over time. No, I think we're almost over time. Yeah, so uh, you can, can, maybe think... you can have 10 minutes. Apna eta apni eta socialization, it's sort of related. I, I wanted to know your thoughts on how social media is sort of affecting our socialization in this generation, simply because on a daily basis, you have access to hundreds of different role models and ideals you can go to. And it's, it's, so, it's sort of hard to know which one is which and which is right. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, th this is a big element. I think we, we miss, it's a big, uh, one of the big puzzles of the jigsaw we miss in, the, in, in our discussion of the thank you for the penetration of that. Uh, yes, uh, what, let me uh, give you my example. What I did, I think that, that, that I'm not saying you follow that, but what I did, it's a misery. Uh, it's a sorrow to share with you being a person. Uh, uh, of course, I'm a young man. You can understand my age, but I don't like to disclose my age. I always think I'm 28, 29. Uh, highest my age will never go beyond 40. Unfortunately, did. Uh, I, I really encountered this. Uh, I don't have Facebook. I don't, I do not use Twitter. And I, I'm not, except WhatsApp. Uh, I'm not really after the social media. I'm not really acquainted. I don't even know how to open a Facebook account. Uh, but still, so when you are saying that how to do, how to handle social media and what we did, what should be done, uh, still, I didn't have Facebook. I didn't have uh, uh, Twitter. I didn't have anything. But still, I really felt threatened by the use of IT. And the name of the devil is YouTube. Uh, when I went to UK, uh, what Ishmael said that YouTube, perhaps a social media, we can say, it's a media. So uh, as I don't use Facebook, I'm giving example of YouTube. So when I went to UK in the very past days, I didn't really have time in Bangladesh to, to go to YouTube. And believe you me, I didn't know that you can watch a movie, you can watch drama in YouTube, or you can even have news clippings or but most of the Bangladeshi channel in, in, in YouTube. My IT official, a boy named Russell, he told me one day I was having a conversation, sir, you can use YouTube to watch Bangladeshi movies, NATO drama, everything. Oh, really? And it was, I think, after seven, eight days of my, of my PhD journey to UK. And I really become a YouTube sick. So I started watching YouTube for movies, uh, for songs, uh, even I was, when I was cooking, I just play a song there. I'm, I'm just listening. For example, our, we, we brought and bought up in an environment of the band songs such as Ayub Bachu, James, Hassan, uh, all, all the bands because 90s was the revel band revelation in Bangladesh uh, from yeah. 90 to 2008, 19. Now, nowadays, I don't know even the name of one, two brands. Uh, so I started listening song, watching uh, Bangla Nato, Bangla drama. I don't watch cinema, so I didn't go to that domain. And uh, news. All of a sudden, after a week or two, I thought, oh my goodness, what am I doing? And it was so mouthwatering. And my appetite was so high to watch old uh, uh, Bangla Nato uh, like it is available in uh, YouTube now. So it took back to my early life. Or uh, Oi Oh Moi, those are the famous Bangla drama. Can you imagine, Ishma, what was my situation? And this all, it's, it's an ocean for me, like Facebook for you, or maybe Instagram for you. So I no, started- do We understand, we understand the allure of YouTube. I think me and Adi, yeah. I, I would say I'm still addicted to YouTube. Like I'm very right. much and very so, dependent on YouTube, so I understand. Yeah, you see, then then I found that it's it's good to have searching different lectures, different thing. I did that, but uh, just just to keep the long story short, what I did then, I when I whenever I uh, sit down, sat down rather in my reading table, first thing I did, 
is if it is not for browsing anything, the first thing it, I, I was living in a, uh, uh, it was, you can say duplex we call in Bangla. So my kitchen, toilet was in the ground floor, drawing room and my, I was in the, uh, you should don't think I'm a filthy rich person, but as I'm senior, uh, the privacy was needed. So it was a two, a two bedroom house. Uh, and then up in the stair, in, in the top, it was my big, uh, my reading room. So what I used to do then, I used to switch, switch put this internet switch off. And then I used to uh, go to upstairs, Adip, and start reading. And after, I think after a month, two or three, uh, then I, and even, even, so what I, after two, three months, I think I, 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 I was getting read up YouTube. Uh, so I allocated a time. So every day, my YouTube or online time should be, should not exceed more than half an hour. It can be five minutes in the morning or 10 minutes in the morning. Sometimes if it is 20 minutes in the morning, then not more than 10 minutes in the afternoon. So I, I really maintain time. So that was my mechanism addressing YouTube, that not more than half, a, half an hour. Initially, uh, it was one hour altogether, YouTube channel, news, recreation, everything. And then it was half an hour because I used to study almost 17, 18 hours sometime. And I, you'll be surprised to hear that I used to go out from my flat for shopping after 15 days. And in between these 15 days, I, except for medicine or very important issues at the university, I didn't go out. So after first year, when the courses were finished, I was in my research. I used to go to outside of my room after every 15 days, underline, after, after every 15 days, even in that situation. I So that was the technique to switch off. And finally, what I did, uh, I used to switch off the Wi-Fi a network in the laptop. So initially I put off the switch, put the switch off in the ground floor. And then afterwards, after two, three months, I always put off my internet laptop and network off whenever I concentrated on very focused research, very focused study. I never use internet or mobile. Did you, did you not need, my... did you not need the internet for your studies or research? Yes. Uh, if mommy, yes. When I need it, I say that I browse, for example, I need an article. I browse for 10 minutes. My, I went to my university, UniLearn. So I downloaded that article, then off again. So that was my strategy. So in terms of social media, first thing, my advice or my suggestion and my observation would be from my experience that you have to use it. You can't really a standalone person living in an island without Facebook. Without You have to use it, but you have to develop or stratify a balance between using social media. Uh, for example, your talking time with the parents, don't never calculate that except your busy days, talk to them. So with friends, maybe every day, one hour, then you can say that I'll be in Facebook another half an hour or one hour, but see, still 22 hours. But one request uh, I like to uh, like to do to both of you or the spectators is, please uh, shut down and study. It means when you are studying, please shut down your internet. Yeah, um, I, I definitely I, understand that. I have uh, I have had days, I think there was one day, um, but this was back home when I was in summer vacation. I used my phone for 16 and a half hours. That's the most I've used my phone at any day. <laughs> um, there has been days when I have used YouTube for 14 hours. So I, de I definitely <laughs> understand the allure of YouTube. And I still haven't figured out a way to uh, moderate YouTube in my life. As for social media, I I have had good habits using it from when I was young. So I never really um, had any issues with it. Like I don't get bogged down into Instagram or Facebook and stuff like that. Like I basically use it to communicate pe with people the same way you would use WhatsApp and maybe sometimes just see what friends are up to. But other than that, I usually stop it. Um, but yeah, YouTube, I still struggle with. Um, it's a monster, Mom. Ishmam, it's a monster. It's a big devil. Uh, mostly, <laughs> mostly. But YouTube really uh, has many advantages. For mm -hmm. example, joining seminar, watching videos. So that has to be excluded because that is part of your academic exercise. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm talking about entertainment, engagement. In terms of entertainment, engagement, or in relation to entertaining yourself via YouTube, I, I, I think you really need to take a very cautious approach as a student. Because for sure, for sure. But the problem is, if you 
watch in uh, YouTube for 10 minutes, it will take for, uh, for you to come back to the study another 10 minutes. Oh, I see that, oh, this is that. And then, oh, mm -hmm. let me read again. So this, this, is, this is normally happens. Mm -hmm. I did hope you get the answer of your question. Yeah, but it's, it's kind of ironic that we're, we're calling the devil for YouTube and this, <laughs> this video is going to be uploaded on YouTube. Uh, but no, remember, I said, I said, I said, remember, Adib, I said there are many good uses. First of all, don't, 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 don't. I was just making a joke. I was just making a joke. To me. I, First I, of all, uh, there are so many good things to YouTube. First one. Second one. YouTube our channel being be the used, most important. Yeah, yes. YouTube has Thank to you. be used for good purposes. But the the, the reason I said is monster. If you like Ishmael, watch YouTube for 14 hours. You can't. The problem with is not with remember the problem is not that I think let me conclude like this. The problem is not with the internet who discovered it with that person. The problem is not with the Facebook. The problem with is not with YouTube. Even the problem is not with a knife who have invented you for good purposes. The problem is the user. So Adi, yeah. when you are talking about YouTube as a monster, like a knife in the hand of a bad guy will kill something. But a knife, a beautiful, a knife in the hand of a beautiful lady like your mother to cook something is always good. So what I'm saying that if YouTube is operated by a bad guy, for example, for me to watch movies, dramas, and listening to bands, some it was bad for me. So I'm saying that, but you like knife, have uh, many good uses and let us promote those and the yeah. promotion uh, promotion in the part of the promotion we should affil or or, or we, oh. uh, we should uh, see the videos uploaded by idea kitchen exactly that's the point we should i guess finish this conversation um uh, yeah been, i'm also running out of battery <laughs> yeah it's been a very interesting discussion thank you thank you Maunako for coming by and sharing your thoughts on socialization norms values and of course uh, culture shock um, it's been a great I, it's been a great way for us to understand how our experiences relate to the theoretical understanding of sociology and hopefully we've been able to impart some practic practicable and uh, readily available information for people to use in their daily lives and of course I've, I've enjoyed this a lot learned a lot from you so thank you for stopping by um, yeah that's it for today. No, thank you, Adib. Uh, uh, from me, let me say bye bye to you and the and the, the spectators. Uh, it was fabulous, fantastic indeed. I really went back to my early days, not only at the time of my PhD in UK, talking to you, especially at the very attractive hoodie you wear, because I can clearly recall I used to uh, wear hoodie in UK, not of this color due to my uh, maybe it would have been a great color contrast with me. But I used to use hoodie. I'm good to see you. You're a lovely boy. And I really went back to my 20, 20, 21, 23 years of age. And yeah. Ishmael, uh, very good to see that you are using your hand to your fancy here. Uh, live fancy, <laughs> stay fancy, but remain successful uh, yes, in sucks. your life. And for the spectators, uh, uh, we really put forward a, a discussion. I don't know in which extent that would help you, but. Uh, as Adib has concluded, we talk about the adjustment, uh, the, uh, the aims in life, the role of values, the process of socialization. Hope this helps. Uh, finally, thanks to uh, two wonderful, great boys, uh, Ishmam and Adib, for inviting me uh, to Idea Kichuri. And all the best uh, for uh, you two, your channel, and of course, all the best for all the spectators in this very unprecedented a time of the world. And we should pray that we should get rid of coronavirus very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I hope you guys liked the discussion with uh, Dr. Abdul Al Mamun. Um, we call him Mamun Anko because I, I know him from a very young age. Anyways, um, drop a like if you like this type of content. Subscribe if you want more stuff like this. Uh, we should release one video every month from here on out. Fingers crossed, <laughs> we don't have a great track record with schedules, but we'll try. Anyways, stay safe and keep cooking. I just don't want to throw it.